Hey guys, it has been a while since I've posted on my YouTube and for good reason, we've had a lot of stuff going on here lately. Um, one big, we moved into our new house. As you can see behind me, we have pretty much nothing set up. It's kind of just like an empty space. So I'm sorry if it sounds kind of echoey in here. We still need to get a dining room table, which is actually gonna go in this room that I'm sitting in right now. We have to get a couch for our living room. And basically the whole thing is just kind of a disaster. I feel like people don't talk about as much, like you spend so much money on a house and then you get to the house and then you're like, we don't have money to actually furnish the place. So just know if you're in that spot, you're not alone, okay? That's very normal. I've decided that things are probably gonna be kind of hectic around here until like, next year and then the second thing that happened with the house is that we discovered a leak the other day it was actually coming from our upstairs ac unit so we saw the leak in our laundry room because the ac unit is like right above our laundry room that's downstairs so we saw the leak coming out of the vent then we had to have someone come out and kind of look at it and everything but we ended up having water damage so we had a bunch of fans in here for a while and now pretty much our entire laundry room is just a disaster everything is torn up there's no cabinets the washer and dryer are not in there anymore so we've been taking trips back and forth to my mom's to do laundry like once a week so that has been fun home ownership am i right but yeah so that's kind of a quick update on the house and now to kind of get into the other reason that i've been kind of mia on pretty much all social media channels and that is because we're pregnant <laughs> It has been quite the journey um, to get here. <laughs> so I thought I would just kind of give you guys like a little recap update of kind of when this happened and everything that has kind of entailed for the last month or so. But basically, Jeremy and I started trying to grow our family, I want to say like the end of last summer. And it took a little bit longer than we thought it would to actually get a positive pregnancy test. So that was kind of hard on me. I think looking back on it now, it doesn't seem like it was that long. Um, but in the moment, I remember like every month, it just seemed like it was taking forever. And I was getting so upset and so hurt because I had just always heard stories of people being able to get pregnant right away. Or like as soon as they started trying, they got pregnant or maybe they weren't even trying and then they got pregnant. And so I didn't really hear a lot about how it's actually really common to not get pregnant within the first like year of trying. So for us, it was about seven or eight months around there when I finally got a positive pregnancy test. Um, and that was in February of this year. Also side note, I'm so sorry if I'm out of breath. I That has been one pregnancy symptom that I just can't get rid of. I don't know if it's because I had asthma like prior to pregnancy too, um, but I am literally just so out of breath so i'm sorry guys so we got the positive pregnancy test in february and we were so over the moon excited to finally see those two pink lines it was like a surreal moment um it's hard because i would love to post that video eventually of my reaction to finding out i'm pregnant i did record when we got that positive test and like me sharing the news with jeremy that first time but I also feel like I can't really post it now. I mean, I guess I still could, but we actually ended up losing that baby um, about five weeks into it. I think I was like five weeks in a day or something. Um, so we really, we really were celebrating for about a week. I told myself I was not gonna get emotional during this video, so I'm really gonna try my best not to. So we had our first miscarriage in the beginning of March. It was really devastating. It was something that we just never thought would happen to us. Come to find out, it actually is very common. So if you've been through that, just know that you're not alone. I totally know what it's like to have that first experience of pregnancy taken away from you. Um, and it's very hard and you are validated in that. Even if it was super early, even if it was a chemical pregnancy, no matter what, a loss is a loss and it's hard. And it was really hard on us, but I also feel like it brought Jeremy and I even closer than we already were. Um, I already feel like we are like, just like so close, but this was, I don't know, just like a crazy wild experience for the both of us. Jeremy ended up taking the rest of the work day off when I found out. We went into the doctor and then we came home and we literally just watched all of the Narnia movies. <laughs> um, so we basically did that and then um, just kind of tried to heal through that process. But we kept hope after that. I still was tracking like my 
um, my ovulation. I was doing like those little ovulation strips, like pretty much peeing in a cup every single day. <laughs> Not fun, but we really wanted to get pregnant. And a lot of people had told me that that method had worked for them. So I was kind of doing that for about like, I don't know, four or five months. And I continued doing it after the first miscarriage. So then the next couple months were kind of crazy because we found this house in Arizona and we pretty much started the inspection process and everything like that. So I was gonna be flying back here to Arizona to stay with my family so that I could start the inspection process with the house. Jeremy had to stay home with Grace, our doggy. Um, so I just came out here by myself. Well, the day before my flight, I took another pregnancy test. This was the beginning of May. I want to say it was like May 4th or May 5th, something like that. But I ended up taking a pregnancy test because I think I just felt off or I felt a little bit weird. You know, you still have that hope inside of you like, okay, well maybe, maybe I am like, I don't know. But I did end up taking a pregnancy test that day and it was positive. <laughs> and it was very shocking it's it's so difficult to explain the feelings that you feel when you see a positive pregnancy test after your first one ended in a miscarriage it's almost like you're still excited and you're still really happy but there's a part of you that's just like scared and you feel a little bit doubtful so i actually did end up recording um, just Jeremy's reaction to that. When we got pregnant with the first baby, I ordered a dad t-shirt on Etsy. It just said dad like on the front. And so I had that already just kind of tucked away in the closet. So I basically put the dad shirt on the bed and then put the pregnancy test on top of the dad shirt. And then I went into Jeremy's office and I was like, hey, can you come kill this bug for me? <laughs> which is not out of the norm at all because I usually come and get him if there's like a spider or something and I don't want to be the one to crush it. So he goes and grabs a paper towel and he totally thinks that he's about to just come like squash a bug and I was like, the bug's right here. And I pointed to the bed, um, to the dad t-shirt and the pregnancy test and he was basically like jaw on the floor. Like, I don't know how to feel right now. So we both were kind of feeling the same way, but we still were really hopeful and really excited. Um, to see another positive, um, especially like so soon after the last. Because I think one of my biggest concerns was that it took us kind of a while to get pregnant in the first place. So I was nervous that maybe it would take us a while to get pregnant again after the first, but it did end up happening um, pretty quickly. I didn't want to tell like a ton of people because of what happened with the first. And I just, it was still really early. I was only like, I think I would have been like, five weeks at the time. So the next day I ended up hopping on a flight, going to Arizona and doing the home inspection and everything. Came here, everything was good. And then I was supposed to fly out the next day. So it was a super quick trip. I literally just came to come see the house and get that process started. But the very next day before I was supposed to leave for the airport, I did start bleeding again. And I'm holding it together guys. It's hard because when you start talking about it again, you start like reliving all of it. And I feel like you kind of push it away after a while. So it's like, whew. But I do think it's important to talk about, so. But I ended up going to the doctor again after I got back because I just wanted to kind of see what was going on. They monitored my blood work and my HCG levels and all of my test results for everything. I, I asked them, I want to be tested for everything because for some reason my body just wasn't carrying past like five weeks and a couple days. and I to this day, still don't really know why that happened with the first two. All of my test results came back normal, everything looked good. So it's something that I still feel like we might never get answers on. I think it's just unfortunately something that's more common than people know and people don't talk about it a lot. But I will say that that plane ride back was probably one of the worst experiences of my life. Um, having to walk through the airport alone, um, I told Jeremy I FaceTimed him when I found out that I was miscarrying so I let him know and we were in contact the entire time but there's only so much you can do when you're both in different states um, so I, I had to get on that plane I had to come home um, but it was really hard and I think that made me realize like you actually really do never know what somebody's going through like up to a bunch of strangers at the airport they probably were just like oh why is this girl just like <laughs> so emotional i was trying to hold it together but i definitely like you could tell there were tears in my eyes like the entire time walking through the airport um but yeah so just be nice to people because you just never know um but i ended up coming home and Jeremy and I started our healing process again. It's a lot of just like comfort food and we actually ended up getting a hotel room one night just to kind of like 
get away. It was just like a staycation pretty much. We brought Grace, um, ate some really good food, watched some movies and just kind of like chilled. After we kind of got through that healing process a little bit, um, I kind of came to the conclusion that I wasn't going to put so much attachment into the outcome of getting pregnant again because I don't know if I just kind of like disassociated a little bit from it or I just was kind of like sick of being disappointed. So I basically stopped with my ovulation tracking. I deleted all of my like period tracking apps um, because I didn't want to get notifications from them anymore and I was sick of switching the app from pregnancy mode back to not pregnant mode or like trying to conceive. It was just like very mentally draining for me to like do all those things. So I actually ended up just getting rid of those. I wasn't checking them. I wasn't checking my ovulation. I wasn't doing anything. And I kind of had a conversation with Jeremy about it. Like, hey, let's just kind of not put pressure on ourselves anymore. Like maybe it's not for us to have kids. Like, and if that's the case, then like, Let's just focus on like you and me and let's just, you know, we can travel and we can do this and that. And we can, we kind of started planning our lives like without kids because I was like for the first time, oh, this could be a real possibility that like we just can't have kids and we didn't have answers. So it was really like a confusing, weird time. We were kind of like accepting the fact that this might not be what we had originally thought it would be. Um, but then, <laughs> so that was, May 10th when I had my second miscarriage and like I said I deleted all of my like period tracking apps and everything so the next month I didn't even think about where I was at in my cycle I for some reason assumed that I was a lot further along than I was so in my head I was like oh my gosh it's been like you know around four or five weeks so like I still haven't got my period that's kind of weird come to find out later it was actually only like three weeks like it had only been like three weeks so I wasn't late at all but I didn't know that at the time because I wasn't tracking anything and for some reason it felt like a really long time had passed so I ended up taking a pregnancy test just because I had a ton of them left in our bathroom so I was like okay I'm just gonna take one took it and it was completely negative like not even not even the slight line so I was like okay I was a little disappointed, but I was also kind of like, okay, that makes sense because we literally just had a miscarriage and it's not like we were, like we weren't really trying. We were kind of just like living our lives and like doing our thing. So we saw the negative test. The next day, it was a Sunday and we were about to leave for church, but I woke up with this insane pain in my left side, like my lower left side. And it was so painful and it got worse and worse throughout the day. At first I thought it was like a gas pain, but it just wouldn't go away. I was like walking, I was like sitting in different positions, like yoga positions, trying to like relieve it and it just would not go away. We ended up going to church and I was pretty much holding my side the entire time out of pain. And then we were gonna go to Trader Joe's and I couldn't even walk in the Trader Joe's. Jeremy had to go in there and leave me in the car because my pain was so bad. So it was very weird. And then my brain started panicking about ectopic pregnancies because I have heard that you get really intense pain in one side when you have an ectopic and it was so soon after our last miscarriage that I, like I hadn't even had a cycle yet like past that so I was concerned that maybe something happened and it was ectopic but then I was also confused because I had just taken that pregnancy test the day before and it was completely negative so i kind of tried to like rule that out but i did call my ob and just kind of let them know like what was going on and they actually asked me to take another pregnancy test and so i was like okay but yesterday's was so blank like there was nothing there so it's like no but i ended up taking another pregnancy test and lo and behold there was two bright pink lines and i was like what that's concerning so i actually ended up texting jeremy from the bathroom and i just was like so we have a problem and he was like what and i was like i'm pregnant and the reason i said that is because i was nervous it was ectopic because of that pain so i was like okay this is really weird it's like you want to be excited because you got another positive pregnancy test but you're also like nervous because you just had two miscarriages and you have a really bad pain in your side so it was crazy, but I ended up going into the doctor because um, I called them back and was like, hey, it's positive, what do I do? And they had me come in for an ultrasound. You can't really see anything that early because at this point I was literally like three weeks and maybe like six days. I was very, very early. Uh, so they couldn't technically see anything on an ultrasound, but they could tell if the 
I think it was like the egg sac or something if it was in the right spot um, and just kind of like monitor it. So basically they had me come in for an ultrasound. Everything was in the right place. They didn't see anything in like outside of my uterus or anything. Everything looked like it was good. And then I pretty much had to go in every other day to get my blood levels checked because of the previous miscarriages. So they wanted to monitor my HCG levels and make sure they were doubling like every couple days. So I went in Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and they were just like taking all my blood. I was like, I'm really good at getting my blood drawn now. So we basically just monitored my lab results and my blood work for the next couple weeks and everything started to look good and everything was looking really promising and we were really excited because for the first time things were progressing and then I finally got to a point where I got to go to my, I think it was technically supposed to be like an eight week ultrasound, but they let us come in a little bit early because of everything that had happened. But we got to hear the baby's heartbeat for the first time, which was crazy. I don't even think I would be able to explain it. Um, that was really exciting. And then we basically just kind of took it one day at a time. I dealt with a lot of anxiety and um, OCD and intrusive thoughts and just things like that um, throughout the entire first trimester, which was not easy. Um, but I can kind of go through that in possibly another video another time because I feel like this one is already kind of long. But I just wanted to kind of catch you guys up on where we've been over the last couple months, um, kind of what's going on. But happy news is I am 14 weeks and a few days today. So I'm out of the first trimester, which is just crazy to be able to say. I didn't think I would ever make it here. So um, just... We're just gonna keep praying that everything goes well and that baby continues to grow and be healthy. But we are so, so excited about this and thank you guys for following along and I can't wait to share more about it soon.